Yes. Thanks. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah, morning everyone. I hope you had a nice uh, bank holiday weekend. And yeah, my talk's called an RSC sandwich. Um, just a warning, I'm gonna go with the sandwich theme throughout the entire talk, so just bear with me, yeah. Okay, so why do I call it an RSC sandwich? I started in industry and then I moved into the research sector and then now I'm back in industry again. So spent quite a few years doing um, research software, but yeah, not the whole time. So just briefly, that's my education flashed up there. Um, it's a bit of a mixed bag, but the, the common theme that, that's kind of glued the entire thing together has been software development. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you can identify with this. You know, it was the part that I really enjoyed doing and the thing I wanted to build a career around. So that's pretty much what I did. And um, just a, a brief timeline. I started at a company called Full Tech Limited in, in 2011. Uh, I moved to the UK Research and Innovation, spent about seven years there. And then most recently, I moved to uh, GE Aerospace, or OC Robotics, um, as it was called at the time I started. <laughs> and yeah, that's where I am now. So the first part of the sandwich, uh, I worked at a company called Full Tech Limited. I was a software developer straight out of university. Um, and it was a really good role uh, because I, they funded my PhD, which was great. <laughs> Um, I didn't have to pay for it myself. Um, yeah, I got some basic exposure to project management. Um, yeah, they, they funded a kind of training in that as well. And obviously I developed my research skills and so on. Uh, I didn't get to develop my technical skills very much, right? So when you're in, in a production environment where there's lots of pressure to deliver to customers, uh, you tend to kind of sacrifice your personal development. At least that's what I found happened, not just for me, but my colleagues as well. And I kind of felt like I was stagnant and coasting a little bit. Um, the work was interesting, um, but it wasn't really, I didn't feel within myself like I was developing. So I felt like I needed to do something else. And that's when I joined the SDSC as a scientific software engineer. And that was really good because I got to leverage my understanding of research from when I did my PhD working in a research group. But then I also got to deepen my technical understanding because I was in a big team, had a lot of support from other developers um, and it really just gave me the space to deepen my technical knowledge, you know, working on using the tools um, that we were using for development. Mainly there it was developing software for data reduction. So all the data that came off the instruments, we reduced the data, did some data analysis and so on. Um, and yeah, it was just really interesting work. But again, it started to feel a little bit comfortable. So then I went up for promotion, became a senior software uh, engineer. That was great because I had a lot more technical responsibility. Um, there was more customer focus. I'll use the word customer a lot because now I'm in this industrial again. But um, yeah, the scientists, you know, working with them closely, trying to understand, you know, what their requirements are for the data analysis. Um, I broadened my understanding of management and, and, and the scope of management. I was leading more junior developers and that was really interesting working with people. Um, and then, you know, spend a lot of time leading the agile development process. So. The way it was set up there, it was very professional. So ISIS actually made a really good policy decision early on to professionalize the software development and not just have individual scientists at individual beam lines developing software. So we needed, you know, to harmonize things and, and, and get like a central platform that was well developed. And, and I would say that that was successful. It wasn't perfect, but it was just a really nice space to develop a career. Um, so again, things started to feel a little bit familiar, comfortable, Felt like I started to course a little bit, needed a challenge. So then I took a, a bit of a leap of faith and I applied for this uh, group leader role. And I should start by saying I wasn't successful at first, right? So when, you, when you're progressing through your career, you've got to be comfortable with taking disappointment, right? dealing with disappointment and, and using the feedback and understanding what it is you need to develop to be able to reach the level that you want to reach. And that's what I, what I did. Funnily enough, the person that they offered to didn't take the job, so <laughs> I was able to get it um, and, you know, did a lot of um, L&D, focus a lot of work on L&D and on stuff like leadership, you know, managing, you know, improvements and processes. So I did some training on lean and, and continuous integration. And then I was able to broaden my skill set, you know, managing customer relationships. So speaking to science group leaders, trying to understand, you know, what's the strategy for their software moving forward instead of just you know, just the here and now and the productionized development, you know, what, what is it that we're actually trying to achieve, you know, forward planning and that kind of stuff, and then also influencing. 
So we were really good at software development, I felt. You know, we, we were very professionalized in the way we were doing things, but that wasn't the same across our partner facilities or any of the, the infrastructure facilities we depended on. So then, you know, I started getting involved in different steering committees, trying to, to influence how they developed the software and so on. And that was, that was really good because it felt like I was just broadening my skill set the whole time. But then I got into this, this mindset where I felt like, okay, so I've, I've got all these skills. I'm in this domain, but can I, can I actually use this somewhere else? You know, it's, are my skills marketable outside of, of the work that I'm doing right now? So I wanted to challenge myself to maybe lead a department lead a, a critical business function in a company, maybe shift to greater commercial focus. And that's when I applied for the role of head of software at, at OC Robotics. Um, and yeah, as I said, there was, there was a, a, a massive shift to commercial focus, which is very, very different. Um, a lot of the kind of blockers are out of the way, right? So the bureaucracy kind of, you know, disappeared in some ways, um, just because there's a much better understanding of engineering as a discipline when you're in a production environment than perhaps when you're in a research environment. So that was, that was really good. Um, I started making a lot of, you know, still doing it, a lot of enterprise level design decisions and architecture decisions, which I didn't before. And that was, um, um, you know, exhilarating and terrifying in equal measure <laughs> uh, because, you know, you're responsible for a lot of stuff. And then of course I got to work with robots, which was a long time passion of mine and it's <laughs> really fun. Um, I do kind of miss the research environment, but I have to say that the robotic stuff is, is pretty um, exciting. So what are, what are the takeaways? What's the advice? So I paid a lot of attention to my L&D um, later on in my career, and I would say that's, that's something that you really should do. Um, there's always a temptation to say you don't have time, right? But, you know, you're, you're constantly learning, right? So the way that I shifted my focus was more on, on my skill sets and less on the technologies or tools that I want to use, right? Um, then I said yes to a lot of things, <laughs> but I didn't say yes to everything. So I had to be strategic about that, you know, saying yes to the things that I felt would allow me to develop in the direction that I wanted to and build the skills that I wanted to build, right? So sometimes you don't have a clear picture of where you want to go with your career, but you know the things that you enjoy and the things that excite you. So you can just move along that axis. Um, Interdependence is key, right? Um, I've got one of the didn't work things is analysis paralysis. I don't know if anyone else can identify with that, but you feel like you need to be the fountain of all knowledge, right? You need to know everything. You need to know all the details to be effective and you don't. You just need to understand the people who've got the knowledge and how to leverage that knowledge and how to work with those people, right? So it's important that you, 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 you focus on building relationships with people because it'll really pay off. Um, especially when it comes, in a, comes to a management context, you know, being able to build relationships with people is important or else you can't lead them, right? Um, and yeah, I manage my own growth, right? So don't wait around for someone else to notice that you're doing a good job or you should be promoted or anything like that. You know, you, you've got to upwardly manage and, and take control of that yourself and, and, and shout about it, <laughs> advertise yourself, all these things, um, you know, and, and it, you know, you will, you will reap the benefits. Um, one of the things that didn't work for me, as I said, the, the first job, I, I, I stayed in my comfort zone for about four years and I didn't really progress. And that was, you know, a bit frustrating, but that was pretty much up, you know, down to me, I should say. Um, so, you know, you, you might not want to just always take a massive jump and make yourself really uncomfortable. But if you do it incrementally and just take on a new thing every time, then, you know, you'll be able to look back in six months, a year, five years or whatever, and see that you've actually made quite a lot of progress. Um, as I said earlier, don't wait for the acknowledgement, <laughs> you know, do it, you've, you've, you've got to do it. And then one, one important thing was knowing when to move on, right? Um, sometimes you might be stuck, you might be stagnant, you might be frustrated, you know, sometimes moving on is the best thing to do for your mental health. And it doesn't mean that you need to leave the type of job that you love. It just means that you might need to, to change your environment, right? And, and you know, it really, <laughs> speaking from personal experience, you know, it's really good to know when to move on. So that was pretty much all I wanted to say. Thanks for listening. Um, if you've got any questions, I'll be around for the next couple of days. So just, you know, grab me. Always happy to talk. My badge is green, so you can get close if you want to. Um, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, look forward to networking with you and hopefully possibly working with some of you because we've got vacancies. I know this is a bit cheeky. 
um, but it's in it's in several areas. So you know, like the full spectrum of seniority, we've got junior roles, senior roles, we've got roles in AI, we've got roles in in web front end development, platform development, embedded software. So if you're interested and you're looking, you know, just drop me a line or or come grab me, and I'd be happy to discuss further. But thanks for your time and thanks for the invitation.